Hello, this is Al Edlin. We're going to continue our discussion of the DC RAC project and using Visio to document uh, network uh, issues. When we work with the network infrastructure design on the network side, we typically are concerned with the three parts of topology, technology, and traffic. In other uh, videos and, and software projects, we've done technology. We, we've uh, demonstrated how to use Visio 2010's containers and lists for doing component attributes. And we've also done a short demonstration of demonstrating how software solutions uh, might be connected. In this one, we're going to focus more on topology. Topology specifically in the networking context is a little different in that we have a geography context. It usually uh, this is inferred when we start talking about wide area networks and local area networks uh, and how things might be connected among them. We're going to continue using the same data model that we've been using right along and this time what we'll do is we will focus on the location tables. We will have a client table as a core table, uh, which basically has the overall information on the network we're working with. We will have a table that talks about locations. Locations in this context are really real estate focused. Uh, does it have a street address? Does it have a mailing address? To support urban locations and campus locations, we will have a table called attribute locations, which is really sublocations, so that we can track data across floors within a building or different buildings on campuses, for instance, uh, universities. In this uh, location, attribute location table, there are three fields specifically that we might want to be concerned about with. We have a grid height field, we have a grid width field, and a grid size field. The reason we've included these is because since the focus of the application that we've been working with, DC Rack, is data centers, we're considering raised floors. And this allows us to create grids on our drawings uh, of known sizes, widths, and dimensions. For ease of use at a given location, we can document cabinet rows, groups of cabinets that, that we want to keep track of. Uh, let's go back a second. For both the location and attribute location tables, we have an additional table of geography data. Since our core data for the application is being kept in SQL Server 2008 Release 2, they have a geography uh, attribute that we can use to link our location data to maps and things like that. Strung off of the cabinet row table, we have cabinets uh, which tell us some additional attributes about uh, components and where they fit within the uh, structure of a cabinet, or rather a cabinet row. Let's move into the uh, application and, and see how these might be applied. This uh, application form has three primary fields. We have a tree view, we have a Visio ActiveX control, and we're using MapPoint uh, for maps. Once again, we have a client record. Uh, as we've demonstrated in, in other uh, videos, you can create reports and use a report viewer to pull these up. Uh, Supple report, we'll close that. Uh, the tree view allows us to drill down because our tables are hierarchical. And as we select the location data, you'll note that the map point uh, map changes from locations. So we can actually start uh, looking at the locations, and we can drill down to this. We'll leave that for another function. What I've done is David Parker, one of the other MVPs, allowed me to use a piece of his code. And it will allow us to grab this map and copy it onto our drawing. So you can actually start creating uh, different functions. 
we're going to delete this for right now uh, come up to mapping and demo multi-site so what uh, the code has just done is it's actually in both map point and in the Visio drawing it's connected the individual locations that we have up here with links uh, in the Visio drawing what we did for the terminating points is we actually copied the map point onto the drawing now one of the things David did in his code is if, if you can see uh, our icon has changed to a little hyperlink if we select that hyperlink it will open a Bing map and give us an aerial shot of that site I thought that was kind of neat so we left that in once we're into a specific location and we'll go back to uh, location 1001 uh, we can drill down to the sublocation a data center and what the tool is doing right now is it's reading that grid data for each of the rows and drilling into and, and drawing the draw the cabinet rows onto the drawing these are Visio 2010 list so what we've done here is we've actually um, using a custom shape from the embedded custom stencil to put them on the page if we select within the data center we can select individual rows we can also drill down and select individual cabinets what I've included in the tool is since we've selected a source we can draw the connected racks and we'll back out and there's a database query underneath this that shows us the connected racks for the connected source and we'll come back here for a second and once again we can do a create report and list off the objects that we were used into uh, the selection so this form gives us a couple of additional functions the ability to do WAN drawings the ability to do data center floor drawings and we'll zoom out and I've included one other piece of drawing which we'll use in a future episode how to create an example rack and also include this in our document hope this helps once again this is Al Edlund